Hi, everyone. How are you? Did, did you enjoy the episode? Isn't that great? Have you been watching Vita all along until the finale? Very good. And if you haven't, it's okay. You can still do that. I'm not judging. Uh, my name is Stacy Wilson Hunt. I work here in LA for New York Magazine and Vulture as the Hollywood editor. And I'm so excited to bring out such an energetic, fun group of people. You will not be disappointed. The cast of Vita. So I will start with Melissa Barrera. Come on out, Melissa. <laughs> Michelle Prada. Sarah Anzoatiki. <laughs> we're happy to see Sarah looking well and healthy. So that's good. I'm we were alive, I was I'm alive. <laughs> I'm alive. I was worried. Chelsea Rendon. <laughs> showing, showing his Golden State Pride today, Carlos Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> and Maria Elena Las. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. So nice to have you here celebrating the first season of your show, hopefully a second, which we'll keep our fingers crossed. Thank you. Thank you for having yes. us. So I want to start with Carlos. We were talking backstage about how it feels to be on stage here versus in yeah. the audience. You've been to a number of these events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is, uh, just tell I'll, us a little I'll bit about that. I'll come by myself and sit somewhere back there where I'm just like incognito <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and just take off right after. <laughs> were but, you um, videotaping yourself? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. I was just, you know, I had nothing to do sometimes. So I was like, oh, I'll just let me come to these and take advantage of these uh you know, these perks that SAG has, so. Yeah, because you get to learn so much from just hearing people. I was here for a screening not too long ago, Phantom Thread. Oh, wow. And it was like, oh, my God. Like, and you here know? you are now. Yeah. We're very proud of all of you, I must say. So before we get into the show, I did want to ask each of you how you got your SAG card. I know each of you has wildly distinct experiences. Maybe I'll start with Melissa. <laughs> I got it from this show. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it just like it had to happen. They were like, you can't shoot if you don't join. So I was like, okay, let me just go into the, under my mattress where I'm where I'm saving my money <laughs> <laughs> and pay so we that I can continue shooting. It. No, but I'm I'm very happy. And it, what better way to like make the transition into the United States than with this show and to join the union and be here with you guys. This is so much fun. And this looks like, I feel like I'm, you're so comfy. Like, I wanna, <laughs> I wanna like, you know. <laughs> Get as comfortable as you yeah. need to. This is a very comfy place. Cool. And how about you? I actually got mine doing extra work. I got the vouchers and, and yeah. <laughs> Well, um, I was uh, eligible after uh, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. I did a, a co-star on that, and uh, and I had my money, and I was gonna like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna save up for that down payment, and then the <laughs> surprise came, right? Because it's like 35. What? Oh yeah, I'll do with a 12, and then I'm my way up. Uh, work it. Um, so uh, then. <laughs> Um, I woke up to uh, a lien on my account by a predatory private student loan. And then I was like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? Because I have to find out how to, how to pay rent, how to eat, how to do everything. I was just stuck. And uh, my friend, um, actually, uh, Victor Duenas, who was a writer's assistant on East Los High, actually was like, I believe in you, and I'm gonna help you raise that part because you need to be able to work. So he he actually did a go, like a GoFundMe, but private with through emails and people, his friends, that he was like, you have money, so like, <laughs> girl, please. That's what's up. And we're like, okay, and um, like that, and over a month, I wasn't able to work and audition or anything, but just to raise money and, and be able to do the down payment. Uh, so that's how I, I got uh, the start of paying. Amazing. And then every month after that, I was like down, basically GoFundMe. That's how I did it. $450 a month. And I was still trying to catch up because that really does affect in, in many levels, like a ripple effect into the future. So I was like, please. And it was like a lifesaver. And I just held on to people's belief that I was going to make it. That's so <laughs> Thank <amazing>. you. Oh. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> for me, it's a weird story. I started acting when I was six, so I became SAG when I was seven. So I don't really know how I became SAG. <laughs> My mom kind of knows that story, but I think it's because I did a movie. Um, <laughs> I, um, because it says it was 2001 that I since I've, since I've been a member, I've been acting for 19 years now. Um, and so I think it was a movie that I did called No Turning Back that was an independent, but it was SAG and stuff. I'm trying, I'm like, she, we were talking about this backstage and I was like, I think it was that. If not, it was a commercial that I did for an attorney. Um, <laughs> but it was in Spanish and the dude could not speak Spanish. So I was like, no, it's todo para los niños. And he kept saying like, todo para los niños. And I kept correcting him and I got in trouble. Um, but yeah, so I don't really know, but it's been since 2001. So yeah, yeah, 2001. <laughs> Wait, you were seven in 2000? <laughs> yes, I'm a, you know, I got a baby face. <laughs> and Carlos? Um, I got mine, I got mine on a film, a uh, Gavin O'Connor film called Warrior. Oh, I love, love Warrior. That. Yeah. Wow, it's a great um, movie. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. <laughs> it was, uh, it was like my first, you know, like legit movie. I'm like, yo, man, I'm, I'm an actor, <laughs> you know? They flew me out to Pittsburgh and all that, so that was really cool, but... I mean, I didn't get a paid a fortune and I had bills, you know, and so I didn't join, I didn't join immediately, but I was like, cool, I'm eligible because I got Tap Heart Lead, which is like, you hope to get Tap Heart Lead, you know what I mean? And, uh, and then I was eligible and, uh, and I got a McDonald's commercial and then I became like, you have to join by the next time uh, or the next job you get, you won't be able to work. So I you paid with that money. But by that point, I had accumulate, accumulated like the 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 percentage you know like so it wasn't just the initiation it was like the ni the initiation plus dues I was like god damn but I, I but I had the receipt I remember I had the I wish I still had it actually because I had I, once I paid that I I, uh, I took the receipt or the money order that I had and I slapped that on the fridge I was like Psh, I am a professional actor now <laughs> you guys know that feeling right yeah. it's a good feeling. <laughs> No, I I had was forced to join for a McDonald's commercial. Was it? Yeah, was it? <laughs> what's up, McDonald's? Hey, those McDonald's commercials. Brought to you by McDonald's. <laughs> those McDonald's commercials. <laughs> what? Where's I my live, McDonald's commercial? And Maria. Yeah. So it was actually my first audition in LA a long time ago, and it was for a Ford Mustang commercial. And it, the lines were crossed somehow, and uh, and I got that I needed to go in as a construction worker. So I went in as a construction worker, and then the callback. Um, they said c casual, and I thought more casual than that. So I went looking awful. They put us in a car, told us to pretend that we were on a road trip. So I'm like, okay. So I'm like, and I start doing, and I start playing like I'm super stoned. And the girl <laughs> next to me is like, what are you doing? And we walked out of the room, and she was so upset with me. She's like, you can't do that. That's that's illegal. Those are you know, you can't do that. You now you ruin our chances for getting this commercial. And I got it. <laughs> hey. 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 Like, do not be afraid to interpret in your own way the content that's the lesson learned i would have took that quite literal i'm like oh, I, dig, I dig this <laughs> not anymore now now you're a big tv star you have to you have to be concerned with these things well <laughs> well so I, i'm gonna go down the line and i want each of you to tell me in one word how your life has changed in the last month since you've shared this show with the world because the last time i saw you was a few days before the premiere and now you're a month or so into this new vida that you have. And tell me, what, what's the one word you would use to describe it? Oh, man. Uh, Go for it. I don't... I guess, I don't know. I don't, I don't think my life has changed. Really? No? No. Okay, I mean, it's you. cool. Okay. No, but it's cool. <laughs> I mean, it's cool. It's cool that, like, now people have gotten to see the work that we did. But like other than like it being out there, I don't think it has changed. I think yeah, like the day to day life is still, you know, the same, but Or maybe I, maybe I'll reshift it to the the response. How has the response felt from fans? Oh, the support is great. And I I when we first premiered, I immediately went I spent a month in New Mexico. So I was away shooting a movie during like the airing of all the episodes. So I was like out like kind of in another world. And on the airport on June first, coming back, 
I got had people come up to me and be like, oh, my God, are you from Vida? Like and ask for pictures. And I was like, oh, my God, like, is this what's happening with the world? Like it's like it's actually like being seen by people. And that was exciting. So the, the secret is go away when go your away. show premieres. Go away. Because if it yeah. fails and you don't won't know read about it. social media. <laughs> right. That's very realistic yeah. these days. Yeah. And how about you, Michelle? Yeah, I, the first time I got recognized, I, uh, we've been doing a lot of press for the show, and I was like, I'm gonna go get a massage. So I went and just woke up, went to get the massage, my makeup was all running, cause you know how it is, you're like kind of drooling, you're like, oh, this feels so good. And I run into the Trader Joe's to grab a water because the masseuse said, drink lots of water and hydrate. And then this guy just comes up to me and he's like, and I was just like, oh yeah, my makeup, sorry. Yeah. And he was like, are you Michelle Prada? And I'm like, yes. And he's like, oh my God, I love you. Da, da, da. And I was just like, oh wow. And it was really wonderful because it was, it was a lot of, you know, him saying how much it meant to him and everything. And then he leaves and then five minutes later he wants to take a photo. And I was like, oh man. <laughs> I was like, listen, this is my first time being like recognized. I feel kind of like a jerk saying no. So I'm gonna put these sunglasses on <laughs> and we're just gonna take a photo and we're gonna be really silly in it. And he was like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. But that was, you know, you're like, I don't wanna be like no photos. And then that's the first thing they're like, she sucks, she doesn't take photos. <laughs> but I'm like, I literally look like crap. Like, Did you please. still have that crease on your face too? I, it was I all there. Like <laughs> and I was like, I think I'm gonna have to start reconsidering running into the <laughs> store. <laughs> Well, I'm sure he appreciated the time you gave him in any case. <laughs> well, um, it's been really transformative for sure. Um, one of the funny responses has been, well, it's kind of interesting, I guess. But I, when we were in Washington, I actually hit my head um, before we met with Congress members. So I had a concussion. <laughs> so I come back home and I'm like ordering delivery service, like food for like three days straight because I was like kind of out of it. And well, the first time, <laughs> caviar, it was through caviar, and they come up to my, and this guy's like, he comes up to my door and he's like, are you, are you the one on the show? Are you Eddie? I was like, uh, in front of my door, I was like, yes, I am. <laughs> I'm, I am, I am Eddie. <laughs> you know, because also I didn't talk to my neighbors about it and stuff, so it's like really interesting. And I'm like, yes. He's like, oh my, God, I love the show. It's an amazing show. Oh my God, you do such a great work. Also, thank you so much. Tonight's episode three, so make sure you watch that. <laughs> And he's the best, you know, that's a really good one. He's like, okay. But I still was ordering, so like, you know, the next time I ordered it, he comes up, he's like, oh my God, it's saw episode three, we're so bad. I was like, um, uh, thank you. So you have a great test market in your food delivery people, essentially. Yeah. yeah. I made sure I tip them really well, though. Oh. Well, we're glad you're better, by the way. That sounds I, I a little... Used to do, I used to do Postmates and stuff, so. Um, I think... I got a lot of Instagram followers. I like oh, doubled my Instagram took my, following. You took my, my, my Instagram <laughs> game is popping right now. That, yeah, and like people are like sliding in the DMs and it's and I think that's the most amazing. My, my Instagram. Shut up. You say Twitter. Oh, you. Oh, have I don't Twitter. got Twitter. Okay, I don't got Twitter. Twitter. I gotta be careful I got what I Twitter say. Followers. That's um. No, but the everybody at least through social media has been like amazing like it's been like oh my god we love the show oh my god we love these characters and oh my god this and oh my god that and it's been like amazing like i think i saw one negative thing that called me stupid but i call my character stupid too <laughs> so technically that's not like a negative thing but <laughs> i'm like if you guys watch the show you know that i'm stupid and yeah and you you'll see but it she's passionate too let's not you know, no, I know stupid. But I'm just, okay she's naive when it comes to she, me yes yeah, she that's, has growing up to do yes um that's nice. That's good. <laughs> um, but so, yeah, we've been, everybody, I feel like a bit, we all, blah, 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 blah. we all, we like live tweet and stuff and everybody's response are so like connected to each character and the storyline and stuff like that. So that's kind of been really cool. Like to be laying in bed at late at night, my boyfriend falls asleep and then I'm like, I can't sleep. So I'm going to just scroll through Twitter and like see what everybody told. And like, like I have a girl crush on cruise. So it's cool to see like people are like, oh my God, woman crush Wednesday cruise, da -da 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 -da. you know, and you feel the same way as them. So is that what WCW means? Woman crush Wednesday. Woman crush Wednesday. <laughs> I, I, I was somebody's you know I was somebody's too? man crush recently. Which one is day, cool. man crush Monday. Oh. Um, okay, so again, I uh, there's said, many I by the way. I have of a list of friends. Okay. okay. <laughs> no, okay. So I said Twitter um, followers, so he could use Instagram followers. Yeah, I got a lot more Instagram, but I'm not. Yeah, I don't have Twitter. I got it because I don't want to be like 
tomorrow. It's good like, to ease you into said all this. Like, well, I said that. <laughs> oh shit! Delete, delete. <laughs> but what too kind late. Of, what kind of response have you gotten to your character specifically? Um, you know what? I I've got I've read a lot of. Uh, we have great chemistry. <laughs> Which I, they I, do. I, I, like, oh, I love their chemistry is so great. Melissa and, you know, like yeah. Johnny and Lynn. Um, I'm also uh, like uh, an asshole because I'm, I'm cheating. And they uh, they shouldn't support me, but they, they want. Do, yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't want to like him <laughs> or them. I you them. know what I mean? And it's like, it's I don't know. It's cool. I don't be on it that much. I, just, I, I scroll. Like, I be lurking. But it feels real. But I don't. But, <laughs> I, but then I'll be like, all right, let me get off this because then I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> just when you think you're gonna get off social media, you you don't. Right. That's just yeah. we have to accept that you're on it, <laughs> like detox. But but people have re- respond in the sense that it feels it's, like it's, a real relationship. Yeah, you, and we you, understand, even though it's clear, quote unquote a bad idea for you. It's still we get your chemistry and you have a connection. Yeah, no, on, and on no on a serious note, like um, like family, like you know, within cl- close family is a uh, like I got good friends. Am I like oh that's cool, man? Like it, it it's tight. Like it, it, it makes sense. You know, it's kind of like how it is. You know, or uh. And it's nice seeing my mom proud of me, you know? Yeah. Like, that's really cool. Like, I'm, like feed, I saw I'm by actually going to feed off of that, too. I feel like this is the first time my family's actually supported me because they're like, you're on a show. Yeah. We see it. And before, they never did. So I'm yeah, going to no, feed no. off of that. Like, that's no. a common, common story on this stage. A lot of people oh, feel sure. validated when it's something's been seen widely by family and friends. And yeah, like I don't you were just in a room by yourself all those years, like not not doing anything before. <laughs> <laughs> I put my mom through a lot, so so like in South by Southwest, it was nice to win the whole premiere thing, and then people coming up like, "Hey, your son!" So and seeing my mom like happy, it was like, "Oh, man, she's sweet." I was like, "That's that's that's." I think nice. we can all relate to that yeah. for sure. And uh, Maria, I, first of all. The no tattoos. You look like a TV executive today. It's <laughs> very, very different from what we just saw on the episode. <laughs> but but the, the transformation is very. It's fascinating. I mean, to see how you bring such life to Cruz, and obviously you're all amazing actors. But this is not who you are in real life. You are not this woman. <laughs> so tell tell us about kind of getting into her skin, quite literally. Really fun to to be able to have that opportunity that the the casting director and Tanya, our creator and showrunner, that they were willing to work with me, uh, work with me, my voice, my gait, my posture, the, the clothing, the tattoos, these things that that you so want to do as an actor, you know, these characters, and a lot of times we're cast for us, right? So it it has been such such a gift. And as far as like my character goes, she's so comfortable in her own skin. And for me, it was, you know, it was a little difficult. I'd never done nudity before. I, my family is super traditional, conservative. They've had, my grandmother, the last time I saw her, the last thing she said was, when you're done with the show, don't ever do anything like this again. <laughs> like, thanks. You know, so, <laughs> so it's, yeah, so it is, um, so just to be able to get out there um, with myself and, and in my own body and be okay with that, especially as a Latina because we have a very specific beauty ideal of the body being a certain way. And and our show's incredible and in that it shows all types of bodies, Latina bodies, it's the first time. And so it's it's great because people are seeing, rep- they're seeing themselves being represented. And so for me, it was hopping into, I want to see myself being represented too. So I'm just, I'm going to do it. Ah. I'm going to do it. So... <laughs> That's amazing, yeah. And obviously we'd be remiss if we didn't mention Tanya, your supreme creator in this this project. Boss lady, boss lady. Quite a force of nature. Now that I follow her on Instagram, I'm like, wow, this woman is busy and she is out there. She just announced a project with Jill Soloway and Lena Waithe this week. I mean, she's really like, I'm so happy for her. How much she sleeps? (laughs) She does not seem to sleep. She's posting at all hours, I've noticed. (laughs) But how much of this empowerment that you feel as actors comes from her? And, and what has she told you in those moments where you're like, God, you know, I've never done a scene like this. I've never done a sex scene like this. I've never been nude in a bathtub, for example. I mean, all these moments that are first for you. How has she made you feel comfortable and, and empowered that, to do these things and feel good? Anyone can feel free to jump in. Well, she, a- she yeah. asks you first. Yeah. yeah. You talk about it. Yeah. Um, I remember when, when she first offered me the role. I didn't even know if I was going to be able to do it, but she was like, okay, we picked you. Now it's going to be a matter of if you get your visa on time or not, right. because like yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't like work yet. Um, but she, I was very nervous about the nudity. I also was raised in a very conservative little city in Mexico and everything is, you don't talk about 
sexuality and you don't talk about anything that's intimate or anything that makes anyone feel uncomfortable and I was worried about what people were going to say about me because that is a thing and in Mexico it would be very easy for them to say like oh she got work so fast because she got naked like that's the only reason that she got that role and I was really terrified more so than like being naked on screen it was more of like what is what are my friends gonna think what is the people in my hometown gonna say about me and she was just like bitch <laughs> that's like you you snap out of that right now like that's not real and i was like okay um and she was like we're gonna talk about it we're all it's gonna be done in a very tactful way every instance of nudity is gonna have a reason for being and it's going to be natural it's not going to be nudity for nudity's sake but also it's not even nudity i mean the scene with the two of you in, in the pilot on the staircase that is to me way more groundbreaking than seeing anyone's naked bodies i mean that was thank you that was incredible and but to see a woman receiving oral sex yeah in the, by the way, in the pilot episode of a new show. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so many firsts. That, to me, was way more brave than... Nudity is one thing, for sure. It's not easy. Yeah. But the, that act on screen is still, like, revolutionary yeah. in a lot and of ways. Yeah, and I think she... Tanya was very, very smart and very... Um, yeah, she has a beautiful vision. Yeah. And it's, it, it's all for the story. And it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I know, like, with, I think with most of us, we had a meeting with her to talk about each character and what we were going to do and sort of thing like that. And thank God I got lucky that I'm a virgin, so she didn't have to make me, like, get naked or anything. But I remember going to that meeting, and we had to reschedule it. And I was like, oh, my God, like, I'm so, okay. I really want to do this, but I don't know. And, like, I almost, like, I almost, like, cried. And she was like, oh, well, actually, I want to make you a virgin. Like, that. I'm like, yes, yes, please put a little belt on me, do it. Like, you know, but it's just once you talk to her, whether whatever it is like we all had different scenarios yeah. but when you talk to her it's just like that weight is like oh my god yeah i know that she's going to keep me safe right. and it was you all know? women by the way these clothes set you would think hollywood would know this by now just have women if you want a woman to get shocking naked. revelation exactly yeah. Yeah. and and so it was it was super it was super comfortable actually the the moment of i was surprised and the flipping of and the flipping of the table like she like in episode two with juniper um, the ones who saw it know, like, he was just, like, a piece of meat in that scene. He was, like, <laughs> naked. I love, I love that scene. And, I, and there's, like, a point in the scene where, like, they're close on us, like, a two-shot, and then you can see how they, like, move back just a little bit so that you can see the penis right there. And it's, like, just to make sure that you're all seeing it and, and it's that's, there. And that's for <laughs> so often when you're looking at scenes like that from the male gaze, women have been doing that forever they're like let's just move the camera a little bit this way to make sure we get that part yeah. and that was important I think to show that because this is a brown female gay show yeah, my agent was like super excited because he was saying for every 100 nudity writers he has to uh, negotiate he has zero men for women 100 zero for men so <clears throat> I knew it was because of my nudity scene. That's how I got into the show. I knew, I knew it was because of my body. It was all because of my body. I will admit that. I ain't no shame of the game. Well, and <laughs> also in discussing bringing up um, that scene um, and then a little bit of what you guys, you guys saw season, or episode six, right? Okay, so um, but it being also nudity not always in a sexualized form. So it's a private moment in the bathroom. It's me putting my clothes on the next morning. Um, there's something really incredible about that, about being able to show the female body. And it, and when you see it, it's not always meant to be sexy or sexualized. It's just life. Right. Sometimes we're just nude to be nude. <laughs> <laughs> just shower and get dressed in the morning. I get, I like, after I shower, I just like stay in my towel for hours. I, I don't do know why. Thing. It's just like, why do we do that? It's just so, so free. So good. And then you, on the you, go, you keep your so. hair in the thing, in the toilet? Yeah, for a yeah. while. Yeah. yeah, me too. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So, so we've just touched a little bit on this. Um, you know, there, there is a sense of what you've just described, and it's funny, I had Sama Hayek here a few months ago to do a queer conversation, like... Tell us everything. Right, <laughs> sitting right here. And she talked... So, real up and this one She was, like, Hayek. more down that way. Yeah. More down real up and comer. Let me touch that. But she, she did talk about that, that growing up in that conservative environment in Mexico and where religion is the dominant, you know, foundation. But there is a sense of, in this show, that, 
you know, the Latino community, Latinx community is not as judgmental as maybe we thought. Because I, I kept thinking like, oh my gosh, I hope you guys are going to be okay. People aren't going to be like shouting things at you in the street. And I think there's this idea of mass intolerance. And I think what this show shows us is that maybe that's not the case. And there's been this picture painted and I mentioned this at our FYC event, that Lena Waithe talked about this with the shy. She's just showing people living their lives. And in the shy, I kept waiting for the, the lesbian couple to have like a hate crime you know, happen to them. And it never does. And I feel the same way with your show where I'm like, okay, where's the episode where someone's going to get it? When obviously in the finale, we see a bit of that. But these people are living their lives and hanging out in bars and going to coffee houses. So I'm wondering how much of that is um, aspirational and how much of that is real life here in LA? Do you think it, f it feels I, real to you? I feel like we give people the power over us. So if someone looks at you and is like, ooh, your boobs, and you're like, yeah, they're my boobs, like, you know, whatever. Or, or like, oh, you're gay or whatever. And you're like, yeah, like what's <laughs> the problem, you know? And then it's like a lot of it is, and that's really hard because if, when someone kind of projects stuff onto you, it's hard not to like take it in and we're self-loathing beings, that, right. we're actors, like, you know? Right. And, but that is, I think what I've realized, like even with like, you know, Mr. Skin just asked to do an interview. And it was just kind of like, <laughs> who? Mr. Skin, oh God. It's like, it's a, <laughs> a web, it's a website that, you know, encourages perverts to never actually grow up. And, um, and it's just kind of like, all right, like, yeah, that's my butt. Yeah. What's the big deal? Like, yeah. right. I also yeah. think the Latinx community doesn't get enough credit. Well, that's like, exactly what I'm speaking we, to. I like, think we have a perception. Yeah. I'm not in the community, but there is this perception of, oh, this Catholic life and everything's just so serious and rigorous and punishment and all this stuff. And I, yeah. I'm learning that that is not the case. It's yeah. not the case. It is a case in some, in some in way, instances. Every, everything's different. But me and Sed both grew up in the area where we are shooting the show and where it's based on. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, you have those families that are super Catholic and super traditional. And then you have the ones that are not. Like, my mom was very open with me about sex from the age of like 13 and so I was at school talking about birth control and stuff like that to my friends as like be aware and then I was labeled the slut and I'm like I'm still a virgin what are you talking about like yeah. what you know what I'm saying so right. you have a little bit of everything and that's the best thing about this show is you see a little bit of every of every of, every, of, every, of everything, everything. <laughs> you know like with me specifically and like our, our dad he's very like machismo typical like household and then with this situation it's a completely different situation but it's still know? machismo in there because he even Eddie will practice it too. Like, and I relate to Madi because for me, that's a lot of times how it is in the community when we speak up and it's LGBTQ, trans, like folks of color and it's like shut down. It's the people take over, whether it's the male or sometimes it's, uh, you know, white or it's usually men. And this case is so accurate. I was like, are you like spying on my life? Like, <laughs> do you know this they person do. that I know? And I'm like, go oh, baby, she does. But no, I, I, I feel it on different levels. Yeah. And, and I also feel it on the love level, too, because sometimes people want to criminalize us, but realize that just because there is that stuff that is that stigma within the Catholic Church or like people who go and practice Catholicism and everything. But like there is also the Doña Titas, you know, there yeah. is the well, that's love. When, when of, her line, Lynn, in episode five is like, it's so woke for these older women to be with the widowed wife and be praying and it's like wow that's great so yes you have the more traditional and stuff but then you have the traditional that's more open so there's a lot of everything and i think that's the, our world that we live in like yes you're gonna see some negative things in the world and yes you're gonna see some positive things and it's it's a melting pot of everything but you also know? like our writers were very specific in that they didn't want to make these issues be the the drama in the show they wanted to normalize it so that people could see themselves reflected on screen right so it's like so what there's a gay couple what she sleeps around with whoever she wants so what right and so instead of if those things that are usually labeled as very problematic in our culture um, they wanted to take it a step further and help normalize it and shift, you know, shift culture a little bit in that way. They, they speak yeah. about it. And also like, what is queer? And Tanya is, is queer, but because she goes out with maybe a male that doesn't identify as queer, then it's like, oh no, she's not queer. So that stuff really does happen. And the stuff that people talk about in like the social media, whatever, like about Emma's character, like, you know, and about slut shaming, that's like for real. And it's really hard because we almost get shamed 
to like to the point that we can't even breathe and we can't within our own progressive circles. But then it also happens in everybody's life. It's not like it's not specific to Latinx community, you know? It's everybody gets like we said slut shamed or or for whatever relationship you're in and stuff like that or the love triangle and stuff like how he says like people aren't going to a shop anymore. That could happen whether he's in LA or whether you're in Chicago or whether you're in Texas or wh whatever race you are, that could happen to you. Yeah, like the cake, the cake people, like the the gay, the gay cake couple people? that tried to like, <laughs> yeah, they were like, oh, the Supreme Court ruled that and sided with the bakers that refused, that were like, no, because you're gay couple getting married, we don't want to make you bake you a cake. And it's like, just like in our show, in a way, the bar suffers and you see how LGBTQ business owners and people generally looking for work, where are they going to get employed? If like in La Chinita, you know, the bar, if they're not going to come because like in your scene, they're like, well, once we found out about how your mom was, then we don't, we don't go there. Mm -hmm. Then it shows you that ripple effect. Cause a lot of times you could look like, why are you so poor? Why this? Why that? Why are you? Why aren't you a good business person like Eddie? <laughs> yeah. Why? Well, it's really, really. Yeah. Layered. Why aren't you a good business person? <laughs> well, why do you just write scribbles on the paper? Season two. <laughs> season dos. Another reason we need season two. Yeah. So we have a lot of great audience questions. I want to make sure we get to these. Uh, the first one's from Laura, and we've talked a little bit about Tanya, but I feel like we can't speak about her enough. Laura asks, tell us about connecting and finding uh, Tanya. So uh, obviously, how did she find you? And then what sets her apart in terms of the way she tells stories? So anyone can jump in. Whatever you want. Well, we want to make sure we all have time. Overall, to get it's audition. More, so. yeah. I'm like, overall, it's audition. I think you. Oh, yeah. So like, I knew Tanya already, but she like was like, OK. Because I'm an activist as well. So she was like researching. So that was good. But then it was like, whoa, I was doing a play and she came and saw it. And, and then she was like, okay, you're, you're going to be Eddie. Like, and I had no idea. I was like, what would you say? I don't even know. And I was just hugging her like, oh, thank you for coming. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> and because I didn't know. I didn't know. I heard that there was no role for me. And the like, people that read it told me, no, you're too young. So I just was like, I just hope. And I just stayed there as a resource, you know, just like, please, I just would like to let you know that, you know, if you come to the east side, like, just respect the sidewalks and the people, <laughs> and like, things like, I was just like, oh, anything you want to ask, like, I was ready for anything she, but no, there was, and, and, and it happened, even when you think, oh, there's no role, like, actually, you know, so she came inside, and, and it was really a beautiful thing, because then it, later, it was like, I was the first person to audition in the room, and that, and that's, like, a really big deal for a series regular, without having that much credit, and television, like, to go into the room directly, you know, so that was, like, a huge deal, you know, so, um, Thank you, Tanya. Tanya just goes above and beyond to make sure that we're taken care of, that it's a huge we're all respected. Yeah, to her, because, I mean, we're all fresh faces up here, essentially. Even though we've been working. I mean, this one's been working longer than all of us. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm going on that yeah. 20th year. <laughs> but it's, it's a huge testament to somebody that's willing to kind of essentially take a chance um, on actors. And the whole show is a chance, so why not oh, yeah. invent it from the ground up, you know? And it almost makes me think of when Matt Weiner was making Mad Men, obviously a very different show, but he purposely cast people who were not known faces. And you start to think, had there been a star on that show, it, would it have been a distraction? You know, is yeah, maybe yeah. if you felt like there was a movie star they wanted to put in your show, it would have worked, but it wouldn't, I don't think it would be as yeah. organic. I mean, that's just my opinion. Okay, next question from Carlos. Um, and maybe I'll have you answer that. And the next one, how do you like working in Boyle Heights in East LA? From Carlos? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I signed um, in earlier and I was like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, it's, it's amazing, it's magical. When you guys I, are really mostly on site. You, you very, yeah. do very few studio shoots, Well, right? our, the, the apartment. The, the apartment. The apartment was okay. in a studio, okay. the inside, because the outside, the bar was actually. In the hallway there. and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, was, it was amazing because we were told to be scared of like protesters and mm. of like people getting angry and we were have to be very respectful which we were of the area because obviously we didn't want to become what the show is about right. gentrifiers right. <laughs> you know and and we were all like very very excited it's always really cool to be out in the open mm. shooting as opposed to like on a stage well i prefer it because you i don't know it just feels like you're in the or real room. world mm -hmm. and i and it's because you are 
<laughs> but it was but it was cool and yeah. also seeing the reactions like when we shot at the taqueria mm -hmm. like the owner of the taqueria was so excited to have us I'm there. sure yeah and and she ended up even in it yeah she was like the voice of que van a ordenar yeah, she was, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but how exciting too for you know people who, so you know people who live in those neighborhoods they're near hollywood but hollywood may as well be 10,000 miles away they're yeah. not really involved in the business and here they are a few miles away from yeah. The yeah, industry that set, and that set person, that the one from the the guy who tr kept trying to come onto our our shots, like yeah, we had a shot. we had a he we had a drunk. guy that walked around the <laughs> the neighborhood. Screaming. No one knew it. No, it was a little old man. Oh, <laughs> he just walked and a cat. <laughs> there was a set cat and there was a man. And he, I remember one time he walked into the where you know you open the gate and he had a he had a box. He opened the, the mailbox and he pulled out food that I guess he had saved there and, and he walked strange. away. Strange. No, no, we actually the the our, he was normal our like he was his neighborhood. I guess it's like this little old man is just always here. He doesn't bother nobody. It's that it's that local color. Keep an eye out yeah. for him. Yeah, yeah, actually yeah. made the food he taps for on this guy though. Yeah. The crafty made it. I think that's it. the reason that no, the show looks so authentic for is because sure. it is. Yeah. And well, it wouldn't actually, look that way. I actually have a little side note. The first two days we were yeah. filming was at the Birria restaurant. And in the back is like the duplexes, like homes. And my mom actually grew up in that duplex. Oh so God. she came to set and she was started crying. Wow. I mean, like I grew up there when I was five years old. My mom's rent was fifty dollars, wow. and now here we are, all these years later, and you're filming there. And like she wanted to try to go inside, but she was kind of nervous, and she was like, "Oh, can I look?" And but I can't. And she was like, "Oh my God, there was six brothers and sisters, my mom, and we lived in a one bedroom." And so now that I'm able to like take care of her and help her, it's like. Yeah, no, it gets me every time. And it's and it's also real. So it's like being able to be there where like my mom grew up and when I grew up, it's like it was a whole nother ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's all those really great moments. I mean, I think kind of also walking yeah, I didn't grow up there, but I grew up in a neighborhood similar to it in Hialeah and there's something really special I think about what you're saying like being in the world and and connecting to it in a very visceral way like it 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 means something yeah. and I also had a friend text me and was like did you just ride by on a bike <laughs> <laughs> and I was like why are you up this early <laughs> but so that I passed by one of my friend's houses <laughs> You're definitely not making the show in a vacuum. Everyone's everyone's around watching. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the next question is from Laura, and I'll direct this to Maria. What do you think best prepared you for this gig in terms of your training as an actor? Oh my goodness, um, I think I think it's probably my 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 voice. I think I I've been doing uh, the Linklater technique for I guess consistently weekly for about twelve years now. And um, it's freeing the emotional voice, so it's not, you know, it's not singing or anything like that, unfortunately, because I can't carry to. Uh, but it is, it's definitely just finding it in the body and unlocking sort of different areas and uh, emotionally. And um, and of course, there is something about a woman who, when she's raised with an actual voice in her family, she has a lower register, and so you see that, especially oh my God, the. Exactly, and so you got to be yourself, and I and I, I didn't. I was raised as very like a good girl, and and I grew up in Saudi Arabia and Japan. There were so many rules on me, you know, and um, and so finding that and and finding those those octaves and uh, and then with Cruz, I just went even further into it, and I think for me that was the little lock in, and then of course just sort of being. All right, here, here I am, and I'm going to do sort of this radical self-acceptance really quick with my body too, you know. So no, I will say, Marielena's voice as Cruz, like she just like got that swag, and she's like, "Hey, oh, ladies!" She walks away, and you're like, "Damn!" You know, like I want to talk like you. Wow, this no, is great. For real, I'm you, I have a woman crush on Cruz. I swear. You guys are by far the most energetic, funny, and cute people we've ever <laughs> had on this stage. <laughs> people come here and tend to be very serious, so you're you're okay, a let's breath get serious. Then. <laughs> breath of fresh air. <coughs> Put a pride um, this, so everybody. we sort of touched on this a little bit, but Danny would like to know, and maybe I'll start with Michelle because uh, you had a very interesting scene, which was an opener to one of the episodes. What have been a moment? What's been a moment on the show where you've blushed when you've read the script? <laughs> You probably know what's in every I'm part. About. <laughs> um, I blushed a little bit on your scene with Jackson or Juniper. Oh yeah, I didn't know 
know that was a thing when I read it. I was like, "Is what is ass eating?" Like I have no idea what that. I seriously, oh, yeah. I, I seriously her, like I called Tanya and I was like, "What does that mean?" Thing. She's like, "You need to watch some porn." Yeah, she, she yeah she asked me. I told her to look up rim jobs. <laughs> you did. Yeah, remember? we were watching it together. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Research. <laughs> couple bonding. Couple bonding. Exclusive on the SAG Foundation. Now you know what happened. Um. <laughs> You guys are getting all sorts of tidbits we don't tell the rest of the press. Um, but yeah, that was something for me that I was a little like, I didn't know that was a thing for real. But apparently it is, and it was something that was discussed in the writer's room that they're like, a lot more people enjoy it than people are willing to talk about it, so let's talk about it. And I was like, get it, Lynn. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, we don't have a ton of time left, but I do want, if, if you do get a season two, which fingers crossed you do, what is your hope for your character next season? Oh, maybe I'll start with you. Well, I think that um, season one, you got to see a lot about why Emma is the way that she is and the backstory between her and her mom. And so I would like to see that for Lynn because I think it's very easy to judge her because you didn't go into that in season one. Um, but I think that there's a lot there that needs to be uncovered. And so I would love to to get to see that. Writers, if you are listening, <laughs> that is my petition. <laughs> How about you? I, I would like to see Emma allow herself to be loved just a little bit. Just a little bit. Not enough that's gonna put her into a full on like panic attack like thing. Um, but enough to, cause I think a big part of what you see is that Emma doesn't feel that she deserves love. She wasn't, uh, showed that very young. She was th showed that love wasn't for her. And I'd like for her to just allow herself, whether it's through Cruz or through her sister. Let her guard down a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit, but just be like, it's okay. Like, you can let somebody love you and it's, it's not always going to be painful. It can feel kind of good. And what do we want for Eddie besides a quick recovery? Right, <laughs> definitely um, a recovery. I think like, you know, thinking about that scene that y'all saw, I just kind of think about like maybe the realities of what it would be like if you did have go through that. Like if you do go through the police, what are the, what happens? Like, um, so that people can see the realities of what it is for people who are queer, non-binary or, you know, lesbian and LGBTQ plus, uh, you know, and that would be great. And some, a little bit more of like Eddie doing maybe things to take care of their, their own self, the self and soul. We saw a little bit with the, the police saying, oh, we don't have time to go through the footage. So I think there, that seed is planted where, okay, if this does move forward, we know that it won't be this straightforward. You know, the cops aren't going to be <laughs> prioritizing this necessarily. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Lose the V card. That's what I want. Take it off. <laughs> good save. Good save. No. No. Um. I. 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 I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's really no. e it's, it's very much easier than you think. I have a no. feeling the writer, I have a feeling the writers would write that really colorfully for her for her first experience. So. I don't know, <laughs> um, but I think one of the things that I would really want um, for season two was I think because her and Emma had the moment in the jail and that kind of bond, and I think. Mari has a jealousy over Emma also because she was able to go to school and educate herself, and I don't. And so I kind of would love for them to have something of like of a friendship maybe or like maybe even that frenemy sort of thing, but like that someone that she can go to, mm -hmm. you know, and I feel like I live with my brother and my dad and I don't have that. And so I think that would be cool to kind of see and just play with and mm -hmm. it'd be fun to, cause I didn't get to film with them at all really. I so know. I was like, always oh, like, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> or with like Ramses or Yoli or whatever and stuff like that. But um, but so that would be really cool. That's what I would want. I agree. I'm like gonna help Mari get into college. <laughs> <laughs> Actually get back into college. I was already in college. Oh, yeah, 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 that's drop right. out. <laughs> What's next for Johnny? Yes, by the way, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm 21 on the show. I'm not a teenager. I just have a backpack because I'm not a purse chick 
and I have a bike because I'm gonna get a little Mexican and can't afford a car. <laughs> but I am 21. No, it's your income. It's your income. You can't afford a car. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> you get a little Mexican and I can't afford a car. But I'm 21. Ghetto guys. is you also ha- good. Your backpacks to carry your spray cans. Yes, exactly. You right. can't fit that in a purse. Right. <laughs> well, not a, you know, never mind. Go. Um. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what I want to happen to me. I want to just get into more drama so I can do a little bit of everything. No, I'm just kidding. No, um. You want more films with me? More yeah, films? yeah, we, exactly. Yeah, I got to get into more, into we'll see more entanglement so I can fight. Uh, You'll fight be parenting a baby. With, fight and make up with you. Um, no, I don't know. You know, I'd like, uh. You don't want to see. I you. don't know. You know, there's just, there's so much to unfold. You know what I mean? Like, I would love, like you said, to dive into their past. You know, what, why is this guy so you know in love with lynn you know what i mean like why um why is he making these choices you know like it's just so easy to be like you know this like (laughs) oh he's cheating on his fiance but you know why though you know what i mean like what what is so strong between them that i'd like to tell that story a little more that'd be great Um, and maria um yeah no not for those reasons (laughs) well <laughs> On top of that, I'll have some more uh, yeah. nice sex scenes <laughs> with, with Emma over here. Uh, I I am looking forward to or, or wanting sort of more of Cruz's backstory, of course, to see how far they can actually get together. You know, if Emma will let Cruz in, and and also Cruz's group of friends, the queers are just so awesome and colorful, and and they show a whole other aspect of the show and the subculture there. And, and I'd love to see more of, of them being brought in, too. Yeah. And on that note, happy Pride, everyone. Have a great weekend. Happy Pride! Happy Pride. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Have a great weekend, you guys. Thank you. Thank you guys Thank for you coming guys. out. Thank you. 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 Thank